After re-watching Avengers Infinity War again, I decided now was a good time to sit down and talk about some theories for Avengers 4. It's important to note that Avengers Infinity War borrows directly from the Infinity Gauntlet storyline. While it does borrow elements from other Marvel Comics events that involve the Infinity Gauntlet and Thanos, it mainly borrowed from Infinity Gauntlet, with that even being the comic where Thanos famously snapped his fingers and wiped out half of the life in the universe. There are a ton of differences between the movie and the comic. Thanos' motivations are different. In the comics, he wants to court death. And in the movies, he wants to balance the universe. Adam Warlock, who is going to be the villain or play a villainous role in Guardians of the Galaxy 3, is a major player on the side of the heroes in the comics. Infinity Gauntlet also takes place decades before the very concept of Civil War and the Superhero Registration Act was even conceived by the writers over at Marvel. Now on to theory. The people who died in Infinity War can be divided up into three categories. The people who were turned to dust by Thanos snapping his fingers, the people who died normally like Gamora and Loki, and the people who survived, the original Avengers cast. Now in the original Infinity Gauntlet storyline, when Thanos snapped his fingers, the people who died were actually trapped inside of the soul gem, and the heroes were able to reverse Thanos' finger snap. And it's entirely likely that the way they will undo the death that took place at the end of Avengers Infinity War is for them to steal the Infinity Gauntlet back from Thanos and release all the souls trapped in the Thul Stone. Some people have thrown around the theory that they will go back in time and try to take the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos before he gets all six Infinity Stones. As we know, there is definitely likely to be a time jump in Avengers 4, due to seeing Robert Downey Jr. dressed and done up to look much older than he actually is, as if to indicate that a couple of years, if not a decade, have passed since the previous Avengers movie. Now, I don't really think this is the case. I don't believe there will be any form of time travel for two reasons. One, I feel it is a very much a plot device and it's a kind of a cheap writing move for writers and creative as the Russo brothers. And also, we know that an older actor had been cast to play Cassie, the daughter of Scott Lang. And we know that there are talks of making a Young Avengers movie. And Cassie, when she's older, around 15 or 16, goes on to become the superhero in Thatcher and join the Young Avengers. I believe it is very likely that they wouldn't want to reset things back to the way they originally were if they do do a time jump because that would revert Cassie back to being like 5 or 6 years old and make them unable to do a Young Avengers movie with Thatcher in it. And this is Marvel. They have a lot of weird and crazy source material to draw from and they could easily get around the Thatcher and Cassie issue. But there's also the fact that as I mentioned in just weak writing and I honestly don't think they're going to go for that. We do know for a fact though that it is very likely that Captain Marvel will be involved in the movie and will probably be more powerful than she is in the comics as it seems like she's going to be able to go toe to toe with Thanos as they're hyping her up to be like the new Iron Man of the next set of MCU movies. We also know for a 100% fact that these characters are coming back because we have sequels for their movies announced such as Black Panther 2 and Spider-Man Far From Home. There's also going to be a third Guardian to the Galaxy movie, though it is worth noting that Guardian to the Galaxy is a team with an ever-changing roster, much like the Avengers, so they don't necessarily need those characters, but that is how they're going to make money, by using those characters, so let's be honest, they're definitely bringing them back. Now, I have seen another theory thrown around that they could go to an alternate dimension and form another Infinity Gauntlet. We know the multiverse exists in the Marvel Universe, as the Marvel Cinematic Universe is a designated Earth in the Marvel Multiverse. The, the multiverse is a thing in the MCU. However, at least in the comics, each universe has their own set of Infinity Gems, and those Infinity Gems 
only work within the universe they were created in. If MCU Thanos was to travel to Marvel's Ultimate Universe, I don't believe his Infinity Gauntlet would work. In the crossover event, JLA Avengers, when Marvel and DC Comics had the Avengers and the Justice League of America team up, Darkseid gathered all six Infinity Gems only to find that they did not work in the DC Universe because it was not the universe in which they were created. So that theory is actually impossible as it defies the rules of Marvel's multiverse. Another possibility, while I'm not particularly fond of it, is that the Avengers just fight Thanos with like a really good plan by Captain America, Hulk and Mo Captain Marvel beating him up, and they just overpower him and take off the gauntlet and just undo everything. But that seems to be way too generic of a follow-up to something like Infinity War and seems more like the plot to the first Avengers movie. I have seen some speculation, very little, but a teeny bit of some casual fans about how maybe some Fox property could appear in it. And while I do think it's possible that we may get an extra scene that like name drops Reed Richards or shows Reed and Stu working in a lab together or something like that or just Stu Storm and Johnny Storm hanging out or maybe we cut to a scene of Xavier in his wheelchair in the uh, Xavier mansion setting up the Xavier school or something small like that, like something that could have been filmed very recently after the deal went through. Because what people need to remember is that Avengers 4 and Infinity War were filmed back to back. When Avengers 4 was in production, Marvel was legally not allowed to use any of the Fox properties. So I'm sure they don't play any major role in the story. As I stated earlier, I do think we'll probably get something, be it a post credit scene or a name drop. Maybe they refilmed the theme to name drop the great scientist Reed Richards or something like that. But overall, I can say with certainty that no Fox property will play a major role in the movie. The last thing I want to discuss is who I think is going to die and how they could all go out. Now, Chris Hemsworth that Thor, I'm honestly not sure on, because he seems to be pretty into it now, especially after how great Thor was in Ragnarok and Infinity War, so he may want to stick around and keep doing it. But I'll be completely honest, Robert Downey Jr. and Chris Evans have been doing it for 10 years, and they honestly seem ready to stop, so it's very likely that Captain America and Iron Man will die in the movie. If Captain America did die, I think it's very likely he would die in an adaptation of the thing where he stands up to Thanos and basically tells him he'll never win, people will always fight, and end it off with Thanos shattering the shield of Captain America in one of the most iconic images from Infinity Gauntlet. I don't think the Hulk will die. I honestly don't think Bruce Banner is going to die, because Bruce Banner is the perfect character for these movies, because he's really just CGI. What they can do is they can keep Mark Ruffalo around as long as he wants to keep making movies. They'll keep Bruce Banner around. And when he decides that he doesn't want to do it anymore. And he's going to be making his last movie. They can just do a storyline where Bruce Banner becomes the Hulk permanently. Perhaps even killing off the Bruce Banner side of him. This way they can keep having Hulk in movies for as long as they want. But they can avoid paying Mark Ruffalo. Well, they would obviously put that off as long as possible. I think it's very likely that if Mark Ruffalo does want to leave after Avengers 4, you'll just write it in so he stays the Hulk forever. For Iron Man, I think Iron Man's death would be the biggest deal. Iron Man started the MCU. He allowed all this to happen. He'd been in all the movies. Tony Stark, Robert Downey Jr. is the star of the MCU. So if they kill off Iron Man, he's probably going to be the one to die landing that final blow on Thanos. And an idea I did have was that all the characters that are going to die permanently because they're after one to leave the MCU could perhaps destroy the Infinity Gauntlet and have to hold the Infinity Stones all in their hands, have to hold all six of them and unite as one, not like the Guardians did in the first Guardians movie, but on a much bigger scale because they're holding all six Infinity Stones, and the one act that they're able to perform with the stones is to bring everybody back, 
but after they do that, they die. You could have a really cool image of like all the original Avengers holding hands, but much like the Guardians did with Tony Stark holding all the Infinity Stones as it destroyed their bodies, and then he could raise his hand, bring everybody back to life, and in the process of doing this, all the actors that don't want to stay in the MCU could die from not being able to handle the energy, but the characters that do want to stay could just stay alive and you could just say they got lucky. Captain Marvel is probably going to live since it seems like they're trying to push her as the face of the MCU from now on. She's going to be in all the movies. She's going to be like the leader, the person giving the orders. She will be the new Tony Stark, the new Robert Downey Jr. when they all leave the franchise. And it's possible that the mantle of Captain America will be passed on to Falcon or Bucky. I'm leaning more toward Bucky. I just was never the biggest fan of the concept of Falcon being Captain America. I personally feel Bucky is a much more fitting character to take up the mantle in the MCU. Because he's been around since day one on a technical level being in the first Captain America movie. Because he's Steve Rogers' oldest friend. Because he's the same kind of character having been around since World War II. And I just think Bucky fits the mantle better in this. I did read a little bit of the Sam Wilson Captain America stuff in the comics and it was fine. But I think in the MCU, if he's going to be the character of Captain America for another like 10 years, you might as well make it Bucky. I think especially with how much they built up that relationship, it would just be really fitting. But yeah, I don't have much else to say about about this topic at the moment. I will probably most likely talk about Avengers 4 in some way in the future before it comes out. Tell me your predictions, ideas, theories, or whatever you really have to say about Avengers 4 in the comment section down below. If you would like to discuss comic books, manga, anime, or just nerdy stuff in general with me, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm always up for talking about this stuff at any time. So just follow me on there, hit me up, and we can chat about that. If you liked the video, leave it a like. You can subscribe for more videos like this. I do comic book content, superhero movie content, anime content, and manga content. I focus mainly on anime and manga, but I do do comic book stuff and superhero stuff on the side. If you have anything you would like me to talk about, be it anime, manga, or comic books, or superheroes, tell me in the comment section as well, and I may get around to doing it. And above all else, guys, have a great day.